So if I'm gonna start a video with Joe Harris, then of course I'm gonna show him shooting a layup, right? Weirdly enough, he is not just a three-point shooter. He actually has a few moments a game where he has the guts to go to the rim, but for the most part, his effect on the Nets, a very positive effect, mind you, is mainly due to his outside shot. Joe Harris is currently shooting 55% from three. Now, I would like to think that's not gonna maintain itself, but since the dude grew the beard, I think it's entirely possible. The beard has given him some superpowers, and eventually defenses are gonna stop leaving him open. I would like to believe so, but he also has a pretty decent knack of getting open. You just kind of forget that he's there, and maybe the Nets will set one little flare screen for him, and then he's open, and, well, as he's shown up to this point in the season, if he's open, it's going in. There's pretty much no question about it. Joe Harris has been great, and he is the first of five role players that are doing their thing this year in the NBA. Not the only five, mind you, but just five that I have noticed early on. The next one is Jonas Jurebko. I'm sorry for highlighting a player who's doing well on the Warriors, given that out of everybody in the NBA, they're the one team who does not need that much depth in order to dominate. Uh, but even so, Yurebko has been good. Of course, his highlight play this season being the tip-in against the Utah Jazz, where KD uh, missed that little free throw line fadeaway. So, Golden State's been looking for a dude the past couple seasons to just be something off the bench for them. If he could be a shooter, that would be great. And Yurebko has been great. They've also found another one in McKinney, who I could have highlighted, but I felt like talking about Yurebko because... I don't know why. He played for my Celtics for a little bit, and maybe I've got a soft spot for the dude. He's been a pretty okay two-way player, spacing the floor out for Golden State as if they needed more of those guys. Actually, they quietly did need, like, one more guy who could shoot from three. And so now I think the Warriors bench is looking good. You got Iguodala, Livingston's going to be healthy at some point, and Yurebko is another shooter. Nemanja B. Elites is a shooter, and he screwed over the 76ers in the offseason. Made him think he was going there, and then last second he uh, flipped the switch, went to Sacramento, and this has quietly been one of the more impactful things to happen this offseason as the Kings have been scoring pretty efficiently, and a lot of it is because the floor is spaced out. If you were looking at the depth chart of who was going to start at their big man positions, I don't know if everybody was saying Bielitsa, because if you're looking at the talent, you would think, well, Kali Stein's got to play the five, and you probably want to put Bagley in there just because, you know, he's Marvin Bagley. Nope, uh, Bielitsa at the starting four spot has been huge for these guys, and it's just made the entire team click. It's spaced the floor out for De'Aaron Fox. It makes them pretty tough to defend because you already got Buddy Heald you got to care about, so now there's another shooter. But it also helps that Bielitsa is not just a standstill catch and shoot kind of a dude he can go off the dribble he can cut inside here he is beating Dwayne Dedman in a one-on-one -on -one. you can just kind of do a little bit of everything and he's been a pretty big reason why the Sacramento Kings have been a respectable basketball team which is a hell of an accomplishment for a team that has looked rough for a few seasons so Nemanja Bialica just make this guy the mayor of Sacramento already if you're not going to make it De'Aaron Fox then give it to him we're heading to Toronto for the next one. I don't go too long without talking about Pascal Siakam because the dude just keeps on getting better. So, kudos to Nick Nurse for fixing up the Raptors lineups a little bit. Doesn't play Ibaka and Valanciunas together that much. Has Siakam as their starting four, playing a lot of minutes. And it just makes them so much better. For one, their athleticism is just overwhelming to so many teams. I mean... Siakam can just fly down the floor, but he's also like pairing that athleticism up with some decent ball handling abilities. And then his defense is, of course, well, it's really good. He can just make athletic plays from pretty much everywhere, and then he's got some real skills developing as well. He'll beat someone off the dribble, he will steal a pass from one side of the floor going to the other. He will come out of nowhere for help defense and block a shot. He just does a little bit of everything. And I think a couple years ago, like, you saw the physical gifts, but you were waiting to see if he could build some, like, real talent around it. And he's definitely doing that. And if he keeps going on this uh, trajectory, 
then he is going to be, well, I say this pretty much every time I talk about the guy, but it's the truth. He's going to be the kind of power forward that every team wants, and you could make a case that he's pretty much already that. Finally, our last guy, a point guard, Shelvin Mack for the Memphis Grizzlies, who is putting up a solid like 11 or 12 points a game right now. The reason this is so big is because the Grizzlies' backup point guard position for a while now has been really rough. It was like the moment Mike Conley's out of the game, it was just struggle city, you know? And Mack is coming in there, and he's just making shots. I mean, I don't think he's like a crazy gifted playmaker. I don't think he's going to lead your offense and all that. But if you need someone to just get some buckets and make the occasional pass here and there, Shelvin Mack's got you covered. He is taking over Raymond Felton's spot as the best chubby point guard off the bench in the league. He's kind of like deceptively athletic. He can beat guys off the dribble more often than at least I would think he can. And he seems pretty savvy in the pick and roll and he's a really confident shooter as well. Uh, his shooting probably being the, his best quality up to this point. And he's allowed the Grizzlies to be decent so far, they're, what, 6-4 and four on the season, which is better than I think some people would have envisioned. The biggest thing for them, Conley and Gasol can stay healthy. And if they can, on top of, you know, just this uh, balanced roster they now have, Shelvin Mack being a part of that, they could be pretty all right. Shout out to Shelvin Mack, and that's it.